To anyone that follows Democratic Party politics, I don't think it's any surprise to learn that the DNC, the DCCC, the DSCC, the Democratic Party establishment, continues to actively work against progressives running in primaries all across the country, whether they're House races, Senate races, or the Democratic primary in 2016, where the DNC actively worked against Bernie Sanders. But now, we have some actual audio, some, some real hard evidence showing how the Democratic Party establishment works against progressives. So, The Intercept got this piece of audio, and it's a discussion between Steny Hoyer, who is the number two Democrat in the House, and Levi Tillman, who is a progressive for uh, Colorado's 6th district, who is running in a primary against Jason Crow, who is the the moderate, the the Democratic-backed, the DCCC-backed candidate. So listen to this audio and judge for yourself. You would like me to get out of the race. If you keep saying, I would like you to get out. And of course, that's, that's correct. Yeah. And I know you're fundraising for Crow. Yeah. You know? I'm for Crow. I am for Crow because a judgment was made very early on. I didn't participate in the decision. So your position is a decision was made you know, very early on before voters had a say. That's fine because that's the DCCC knows better than the voters of the 6th Congressional District, and we should line up behind that candidate. That's certainly a consequence of our decision. There are two things I'd like you to consider. One may be easier than that. The first would be, uh, if you stay in the race, mm-hmm. and frankly, I would hope you would not. I'll get to that. But if you stay in the race, it is not useful to the objective to tear down Crow. Mm-hmm. Crow is clearly the favorite. That doesn't mean you win. It just means he's the favorite. I hear you. That doesn't mean it's right. It just means no. no, I hear you. Right. I don't know Crow well, but I think he's a decent human being. So before we before we go any further on that, Crow is the favorite. N- in no small part, Congressman Hoyer, because the DCCC not only put its finger on the scale, but started jumping on the scale very early on. And I'm born and raised a Democrat. I mean, it's undemocratic to have a small elite select someone and then try to rig the primary against the other people running. And that is is basically what's been happening. I hear you, and I disagree. But you were part of that process as well. You said absolutely. Yes, yeah. I've been at this a long time. Yeah. Uh, when I said you need to get in strong, hard, and early, you disagree with me. You know, obviously, that's your choice. And you guys are shoveling money at him. I'm going to continue. You're going to continue to do it? We are going to continue to do it. And the reason why we're going to do it is because a decision was made to focus. It was clear that was our policy and our hope that we could, early on, try to come to agreement on a candidate that we thought could win the judgment, mm-hmm. and to give that candidate all the help we could give them so that we would have a unified effort going into a general election. Which, which means, effectively, Congressman Hoyer, I'm running a campaign against Crow and against you and against the DCCC, because you guys are on Crow's side. Yeah. Unbelievable. So once again, credit goes to The Intercept and, of course, Tilleman there for recording that conversation. Now, this shows you what actually goes on behind the scenes. That it's not just about the funding, how the DCCC is picking moderate candidates, candidates that represent their best interests, that represent corporate interests, the status quo, and the consultant class. It's not just about the money. It's also about how people like Steny Hoyer, the number two Democrat in the House, powerful Democrats, are actively trying to push out progressive challengers. Now, you think in a democracy that you would sit back and allow the process to take place. Whoever wants to run in these elections, run, and the candidate with the best ideas, the best campaign, the one that can convince the most voters to vote for them, 
that that person should win and the DCCC shouldn't be putting their money or interest behind any candidate. But that's not what happens. So this is not a democracy. This is a broken system. Now, it, it, it's, it's funny and crazy because this is allowed to happen. So we know we're right. We are the principled ones. We want the people with the best ideas to win. If a corporatist has the best ideas, if they're able to convince the most voters, then fine, they win the election. We're not trying to push them out. We want an actual fair election. But they don't want that. They are actively trying to push out progressives, showing that they don't want a fair election. So, like, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You run as a Democrat, as people in the Democratic establishment will tell you, oh, if you aren't happy with the candidates, then run. You should run for office. Okay, Tillman ran for office. Look what's happened. The party is pushing him out. And then what if he tries to run as a third party? Oh, don't spoil it for the Democrat. What are you doing? So you can't run as a Democrat, as a progressive. You can't run as a third party, as a progressive. Do you understand why people, why voters are actively removing themselves from the Democratic Party? Why would people want to be associated with a party that doesn't allow democracy to actually take place? A party that puts all of their, their money, all of their power behind candidates that continue to push the status quo and protect corporations and big money donors and the consultants. Why would anybody want to support a party that does that? So that's why progressives are actively trying to take over the Democratic Party, because that's the only way change is going to happen. It's not going to happen if you sit back and allow this to keep happening. You have to push back. And I'm glad Tilleman recorded this conversation and released it, because something like this is what people need to generate um, anger and excitement to be able to actually actively push back against the power structure that is currently holding them down. Now, here's some more from uh, The Intercept. In races in Pennsylvania, Minnesota, Texas, Nebraska, California, and beyond, progressive candidates are finding that the DCCC has mobilized support for moderate candidates with access to early campaign cash at the expense of progressives. As we've reported, many first-time candidates are told by the DCCC that before they can even be considered, they have to perform the Rolodex test to show they can raise $250,000 or more from the contact list on their phone. This shows you that these races are all about money. Who can raise the most money? Who has the best contacts? Who has the closest connections to large corporations, to big money donors? That's the candidate that the Democratic Party establishment gets behind. Now, don't you think that would breed a certain kind of candidate? Maybe one that has an inclination towards people that have a lot of money, have a lot of power, and not necessarily a candidate that wants to represent the best interests of the voters? This stuff's obvious, but they don't care. They care about keeping the status quo. They care about keeping the consultants happy. They care about keeping their big donors happy. It's all a system where they want to maintain their wealth. So they actively push out progressives and focus on who can raise the most money because that keeps all of their friends happy. Now, Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, <laughs> in case you were confused about any other Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi came out and responded to this and she was all, oh yeah, she, 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 she went crazy. She's like, I can't believe this is happening. We have to support progressives in races. No, that didn't happen. <laughs> Here's what Pelosi actually said. So as political reports, Pelosi defends Hoyer's comments in secret recording, saying, quote, I don't see anything inappropriate in what Mr. Hoyer was engaged in conversation about, Pelosi told reporters at her weekly news conference. If the realities of life is that some candidates can do better in the, in the general than others, then that's a clear-eyed conversation that we should be having. Bullshit. It's not about who can do better in the general. It's about them protecting their special interests. Them protecting their consultants, protecting their big money donors, protecting their corporate donors, their lobbyists. That's what this whole thing is about. If it was actually about who could do better in the general, then maybe they think, hey, we keep losing this election. We, we keep losing this seat since 2009 and we keep choosing the candidates. Maybe we should actually allow a progressive to run this time because clearly we've shown that we can't win this race. 
but it's not about that. And even then, I wouldn't say that anybody should be propping up different candidates. The DCCC, the, the Democratic Party establishment in general, should be sitting back and allowing this, this election to take place. They should be neutral in this. They shouldn't be backing anybody until the primary is over. But they back certain candidates because they want to back the candidates that represent them. They're not afraid of a progressive losing in the general. They're afraid of a progressive winning. Because they know if a progressive wins, there goes their whole system. There goes the consultants. There goes the big money donors. And now we have somebody who actually represents real people. We can't have that. We need to have the system that... The system that's in place, we need to continue that because it's made us so much money. It's all about money. It's not even about winning this race. So I just want you to understand why people have left the Democratic Party. Now, I don't, uh, I don't support that. I think the, the better idea is to try and take over the Democratic Party by trying to push out these power players like Nancy Pelosi. But I get it. If you, if you feel like you can't vote for Democrats, or at least can't vote for moderate Democrats, I get it. Because this system, the power and the money at play, continues to push back against your best interests. So, this is not a democracy if the voters can't actually choose who represents them. Hey, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button below and consider throwing me a few bucks on Patreon at patreon.com slash therationalnational or therationalnational.com slash join.